12 years ago, I was reading an article regarding climate change and the growing concern over carbon emissions in our atmosphere. I noticed in the article there was a fair bit of attention being paid to the large industries like power generation and the automotive industry, but there was nearly no mention of the heating industry, the industry that I have focused nearly 20 years of my career on. And according to Statistics Canada, roughly 15% of the emissions generated in this country come from my industry. So I started to look at the work that was done by the large heating manufacturers of heating appliances to see what was being done to address this. And as best as I could tell, most of the research and development work that was being done was directed toward maximizing efficiencies. Nothing was being done to deal with the emissions directly. And the reason for this is fairly simple. It is far easier to deal with a large single emission point than multiple emission points. So in order for you to be able to capture more carbon than you're producing, the infrastructure needed to make that work uh, has to obviously fall within those guidelines. You have to be able to uh, not rob Peter to save Paul. And further to this, the work that is being done is not being done well enough, in my opinion. And to understand what I'm referring to, all you need to do is go outside today after you leave here, take a look at the city skyline, and notice all of those plumes of steam that are rising off of those buildings. And that represents heat that somebody has bought and paid for. And we're just venting it off into the atmosphere. So I realized that something more needed to be done. So my colleagues and I have spent 12 years developing our current technology to reduce these emissions and to have a positive impact in climate change. And our goal was to see if a solution to reduce these emissions was possible beyond simple energy management and energy, uh, sorry, efficiency increases, pardon me. Now, in order to reduce the amount of wasted heat and uh, carbon dioxide emissions, we needed to find something simple and cost-effective. Now, heat exchangers, we've been using them for thousands of years, that's fairly simple. We had a pretty good understanding of how to deal with the wasted heat. But what about the carbon emissions? What simple reactant could we use to interface with the carbon emissions that we were producing. And as it turns out, a chemical that we use in the heating industry is actually quite good at it. Not only is it good at it, but as it's reacting with the carbon dioxide emissions, it actually creates heat, which we need. And it produces a commodity that we use. It produces soda ash. And to give you an example of how much, or an idea rather, of how much soda ash we use, global consumption of soda ash is roughly 62 million metric tons per year. And it's used in everything from concrete manufacturing, detergents, uh, glass manufacturing, uh, pharmaceuticals. It's like the Swiss Army knife of chemicals. Just to name a few. So what about the look of the device that we were building? Surely we could just take these processes, just jam them inside a square box, shuffle them out the door. I mean, that's what the other manufacturers are doing, right? fairly uninspired devices. Well, we couldn't really do that. So many years ago, I had the pleasure of working on a heating system here in Calgary at a church downtown. And uh, the boiler had quit working, and I had been tasked with going out to repair it. So I walked down into the basement of the church, and I walked into the mechanical room, opened up the door, and there was this boiler. And it was amazing, absolutely amazing. It was love at first sight. I was in love with this thing. <laughs> That's weird, right? I'm okay with weird. I'm okay with that. So this boiler was installed in 1923. It was originally designed as a coal-fired boiler and was later converted into natural gas in the 1940s. But what was most remarkable to me was the attention to detail in the build of this boiler. It had intricate floral designs and scrolling on the face of the cast iron. Now, the logic by today's standard is that amount of detail is a complete waste. I mean, you're putting it on a boiler, you're putting it in a mechanic room, you're closing the door and you're forgetting about it. Why, why waste the amount of resources on that? Now, the struggles with, uh, associated with shifting an entire industry can be overwhelming. And changing the habits and mindset of both builders and consumers is not an easy thing to do. And bringing attention to something that we have taken for granted for so long is not something you can change within a few discussions. Now, we've been told that this path that we've chosen will not be easy. Uh, we've been told that uh, it'll be long and arduous, but we're still here. We're still working. Working towards sh changing an entire industry that is already set to change, whether it wants to 
or not. And my dream is that this marriage between form and function will be able to help the industry and the consumers alike pay closer attention to the details of the equipment that we produce and the emissions that we're uh, uh, producing. And with a little bit of luck and a ton of work, I believe we can make a difference and play a role in reducing our impact on the environment. That's really short. Thank you.